dare to look into a world where you are vulnerable. Smile while the clueless glass shows what it sees, never knowing the beauty that lies beneath. So right now in my house, clementines are the favorite. They're juicy, they're sweet, they're a healthy snack. We're still trying to teach my one-year-old that you're not allowed to eat the peel, too. We're working on that. Um, but I think we go through about 20 of them a week. But in order for us to eat 20, if we're the average family in the US, we probably have to buy 26. Some of them end up in the back of the the shelf on the fridge. Some of them just spoil or start to mold before we're ready to eat them. Some end up on the floor when my one-year-old is trying to eat them. Um, but on average, we're probably buying about 26. In order for the grocery store to sell us 26, they're probably buying 28 from the supplier. They have some of the same issues. They don't manage inventory exactly right. They spoil before they're sold. In order for the distributor to sell that grocery store 20, 26, or sorry, 28, they have to buy 32 from the grower. Same thing, inventory management, quality issues, sometimes it's just aesthetic, and that's the reason it ends up in the trash. And in order for that grower to sell to the distributor 32, they have to grow 37. So now, in order for me and my family to eat 20 clementines a week, 37 had to be grown. And that's a lot of waste. Globally, about one-third of the food that we produce for consumption goes to waste. And this happens in every supply chain, in every type of food, in every region of the world, and in every kitchen in the world. This isn't just a problem with waste and food security, it's also a huge issue when it comes to climate change. When you think about all of the resources that went into growing, storing, distributing, selling, all of that food that goes to waste, it's not surprising that food waste accounts for about 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And if food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter behind China and the US. Oh, and by the way, this is expensive too. Food waste costs our global economy about $2.6 trillion each year, which makes it a business opportunity. And when you look at different types of food, they don't all go to waste at the same rate. Unfortunately, some of the most highly nutritious foods, like fruits and vegetables, go to waste the most. As much as 50% of things like clementines end up going to waste. About 10 years ago, a group of scientists right here in Santa Barbara became obsessed with this problem. There were some solutions to address this issue of perishability, things like refrigeration, plastic packaging, controlled atmosphere shipping containers. But a lot of these tricks also have unintended environmental impacts. We're, I think many of us are aware of the plastic, the persistence of plastic in our environment, like our oceans, as well as the energy consumption and additional emissions from refrigerants in storage and distribution. So instead of going into the lab and trying to synthesize something new that the world had never seen before, these scientists turned to nature. They looked at these fruits and vegetables and tried to understand, you know, why is it that when I pick an apple off the tree, it doesn't immediately go to mush. Every fruit, vegetable, plant on the surface of Earth already has a protective layer. The peels and skins that allow them to maintain moisture and prevent oxygen from getting in and causing decay so that they do have a shelf life, maybe just not quite as long as we would want it to be. So then they started comparing different types why is it that a lemon lasts so much longer than a strawberry? And when they looked under the surface and they studied at the molecular level what was going on inside of these peels and skins, they found that actually the ingredients and the molecules were the same in the lemon and the strawberry and the leaf on the tree and the broccoli and really anything, but they were structured differently. 
And so this became the inspiration for the development of the product. Today, a peel is an edible, plant-derived coating that's applied to fresh fruits and vegetables after they're harvested that slows down the rate of water loss and oxidation. So the rate at which water gets out and oxygen gets into the fruit, the primary causes of spoilage. By slowing this rate down, we have more time at each stage in the supply chain to reduce waste and to create other efficiencies. So we've started to understand this issue of shelf life and this product appeal is available on certain fruits and vegetables in tens of thousands of grocery stores around the world. And now the fun part begins. Now we get to dig in to better understand this problem that we set out initially to solve, food waste. So humor me for a second. How many of you would eat a banana that had one brown spot? How about five brown spots? What if half of it was brown? How crisp does the apple need to be for you to consider it edible still? Would you eat a lime that started to turn yellow and look more like a lemon? Would you buy it if it looked that way? It turns out shelf life for this type of food is highly subjective. It's actually quite personal. And what you might eat and what I might eat could be dramatically different, even on a day-to-day -day basis. And this has raised some really interesting questions. And so now we're studying not just how much longer we can prevent the moisture leaving and some of these other you know, more tactical measurements. We're studying firmness, color, you know, how much water is still in the fruit, all of these different dimensions, how many brown spots there still are, to really get at what our product performance needs to be to reduce the most waste for the most people. And this, I think, is at the root of what it really means to, to focus on innovation, to understand a problem that may be very simple to others and really dig in so that your understanding is so nuanced and complex and you've looked under the surface in every which direction. Because the more obsessed you become with the problem, the better position you'll be in to come in with the right answers. Thank you. <laughs>